Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott, and today we're going to do a deep dive on Anthony Norvell. Anthony Norvell is fascinating, a wonderful, I guess you'd call him a new thought author, who wrote several really fantastic books. Some of my favorites are The Million Dollar Secret Hidden in Your Mind. And he was a popular writer and a lecturer on occult and esoteric topics, particularly the uses of visualization to bend reality to the individual's personal will. He had a gift for making workable, practical, and accessible methods available in his writing. So for many years, he lectured weekly at New York's Carnegie Hall, very much like Neville Goddard. The Million Dollar Secret Hidden in Your Mind, published in 1963, was one of his most popular works. I really love a book he wrote called Metaphysics, New Dimensions of the Mind. And there's some chapters in here that really blew my mind, the way he explained stuff. And it's very powerful. There's a great Medium article where Mitch Horowitz explores Anthony Norvell, and I read several different writings, and he is just a fantastic writer. And I have used several of his techniques. Over time, many of them are just as good as some of the techniques that Neville Goddard teaches, and I wanted to start exploring and sharing these on The Reality Revolution. There is one chapter in particular that I wanted to read that is in his book Metaphysics, The New Dimensions of the Mind. And this is called The Ten Keys That Unlock the Metaphysical Forces of Your Mind. And you may not have accessed your power yet. I don't know where you're at in your process of understanding yourself, your higher self, and your power to create reality. There are different ways that you can access this power. This chapter defines 10 ways that you can do it. And if you use these different techniques, you can begin to expand your metaphysical power. Anthony Norvell begins by saying, your mind possesses vast reserves of power and knowledge within its domain. When we speak of mind in this study, we mean the totality of consciousness, which scientists call the conscious, the subconscious, and superconscious minds. In metaphysics, we add another dimension to mind. This is the divine mind, which is often called the cosmic mind or universal intelligence. It has been found that in psychological experiments where people were hypnotized, they possessed amazing knowledge that they did not have in their conscious states. Some people could speak foreign languages fluently, although they had never been abroad or studied such languages. Others knew how to play the piano or some other instrument. Still, others knew about countries, and strange places where they had never been. Where were these reserves of knowledge stored? If they were not in the conscious mind, then they must have resided in some other part of consciousness, where the person was not even aware of them. One man, who had a very poor mind for mathematics, could add subtract and multiply long lists of figures while in a state of hypnosis. Miracle Super Forces of Geniuses Certain men and women throughout history have known how to release these miracle super forces of the divine mind and perform feats that astounded people Joan of Arc was such an example. 
She was a poor peasant maid who had never been away from her village. When she began to hear voices and have visions, people thought she was obsessed with evil spirits. She saw in her visions that she would ride at the head of France's victorious armies and the voices told her that she would one day save France. When she finally convinced the French generals of the veracity of her visions, they put her at the head of their soldiers and she led them to victory after victory. Were her visions delusions? Or rather, were they induced by some super force within her consciousness that knew of her divine destiny. We are inclined to believe the latter, for too many times in history men and women have had this kind of divine vision and have achieved miracles that were impossible for ordinary men and women to perform. In his experiments in extrasensory perception, a noted authority tells of an instance where a young woman's father died, leaving her impoverished. After the funeral expenses were paid, there was no money left for food in the house. One night, this woman had a realistic dream in which her father came to her as she had known him in life and told her of a secret compartment in an antique piece of furniture in the living room where she would find a large sum of money hidden in big bills. Upon awakening, the woman could still hear the sound of her father's voice in her ears. She arose and went to the antique dresser her father had told her about. She reached into a recessed area behind one of the drawers and there found the money in the secret compartment she had been told about. How Napoleon Unlocked this super force. Napoleon called upon the miracle super force of his higher mind and won for himself a position as emperor of France and nearly conquered the entire continent in his 20 year rule. He believed in astrology and was told early in his life that he was destined to become a king. He believed that he was destined to liberate the people of France from tyranny and poverty and to unite all of Europe in a great confederacy over which he would rule as emperor. When he consulted mystics and seers, they confirmed his own inner conviction that he was born to rule. This idea became an overpowering, magnificent obsession in Napoleon's mind. He began to study the art of warfare, of political and diplomatic strategy, and finally, when he felt the stars were auspicious, he set out on his rendezvous with destiny. There is no doubt that Napoleon tapped some higher power, another dimension of mind than his own conscious mind, to rise to the heights he ultimately attained. What were the miracle keys that he used to unlock the super force of his mind? The 10 Miracle Keys to All Greatness In a study of metaphysics, we find there are 10 keys that unlock the miracle super force of the mind. We shall study each of these keys in turn and see how to apply them to your own life. With these keys, you can unlock doors of consciousness where the miracle super force resides. First, the key of imagination. Your destiny is forged in the workshop of your imagination. It is in his imagination that man can truly grow wings of soul and soar above the limitations of mortal mind and become godlike in his dreams and aspirations. That which you can conceive, you can achieve. 
the very act of picturing a condition you desire sets into motion certain super forces within your higher mind that begin to create conditions imaged. Einstein gave the world a mathematical formula which perfectly states the metaphysical law for using creative imagination to materialize the destiny we desire. Einstein's formula is expressed mathematically as E equals MC squared. What this formula says is that energy and matter are convertible. Mental energy possesses its equivalent in matter and is as real as so-called material energy. All physical and material things are actually manifestations of energy. The energy in a thought produces its own materialization. An idea is as real and solid as a bridge or a skyscraper. The concept of love is as real and permanent as the sun or the earth. The fact that mental energy cannot be seen or felt does not argue that it has no existence. Let us examine this metaphysical concept further below. I've reduced it to a practical formula which utilizes the imagination as the energy producing miracle force. It is dream, dare, and do. What is your big dream in life? It is through your imagination that you must picture what I call your big dream of life. There can be no actual achievement of your dream, the daring and the doing of our metaphysical formula until you first have the picture in your imagination of the things you want to attract in life. The dream stirs into action the miracle super forces of your higher mind and the mental and spiritual energy that it sets into motion externalizes in creative patterns. Do you dream of achieving some high goal in life? If you do, it must be specific and clear cut. Otherwise, the super forces of your higher mind are not activated sufficiently to bring it into being. I remember in my first year in high school in biology class when we were studying the sprouting of plants, we were given home study work where we were told to plant bean seed and then watch them mature. I was so anxious to see the miracle of growth and environment that I kept digging up the poor bean seed until it gave up in discouragement and died. The picture of the mature bean, the sprouts, the roots, the final edible vegetable inherent in the seed were all there in the invisible dimensions of time and space, waiting for the final creative pulsation in the soil. But the law of growth could never work when it was constantly disturbed. The same law applies to your life. In your imagination, you plant the seed of the crop you wish to reap. The super forces of your higher mind are ready and waiting to mature the destiny you want, but you must hold the picture firmly in mind. Then, let the higher power mature your dream and externalize it into physical and material equivalent. One man's imagination changed the world. One of the most imaginative men in history was Jules Verne, who lived between 1828 and 1905. He wrote more than 100 books and in his imagination created the first submarine 
helicopter, radio, television, and dirigible. Simon Lake invented his submarine from inspiration he received when he read Verne's story, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Verne's imaginative pictures were fanciful, but they were converted into rational and productive products by men who read his literary works and were in turn inspired by them. Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin when he saw his pet cat trying to reach through the bars of a cage to get at his canary. In his imagination, Whitney visualized steel bars holding back the cotton seed while iron claws drew out the fluffy white cotton between the bars. This one invention revolutionized the industry of the South. The miracle super forces of man's higher mind were stimulated by the power of the imagination to produce such modern great things as the printing press, wireless, radio, television, automobile, typewriter, harnessing of electricity, the splitting of the atom, and the creation of such miracles as the electronic microscope, the 200-inch telescope at Palomar, and now man's ultimate triumph of mind over matter, the creation of spaceships that are on their way to the moon and the distant stars. How to stimulate your imagination. 1. Read a scene in a book or magazine, and then in your imagination try to project that scene in all its details. Add to it what you wish, and make the scene come to life vividly, trying to see the characters, the environment, the action, and any other details that are described in the story. 2. Think back to your childhood and recall some scene that you enjoyed, such as the Christmas, Thanksgiving, or birthday. In your mind's eye, try to recall the people who were there, the things they said and did, the food you ate, and any other details you can remember. 3. Picture your perfect dream home. Cut pictures out of home decorating magazines and let them serve as a stimulus to your imagination. Visualize a party in the dream home. See the friends you have invited. Work in the garden and do any other activities in your mind which you might perform in such a home in reality. 4. Stand before a mirror and imagine that you are speaking before a vast audience in an auditorium. You can speak aloud or to yourself. Make up a talk on some subject with which you are convenient. The speech can be short, one or two minutes, or it can be longer. The brain centers are stimulated by such an exercise and make it possible for you to speak more fluently when you need to express yourself. 5. Imagine yourself having a million dollars. This mental exercise will help you stimulate the miracle response centers of your brain for building a fortune. If you cannot imagine yourself being rich, it will be difficult to ever attract a fortune. 6. Imagine yourself standing on the prow of a boat headed for some exotic land like Hawaii. You can use pictures from travel magazines to help stimulate your imagination in relation to this exercise. Some people have used travel pictures and literature to stimulate the miracle response centers of their brains, and soon they found themselves actually visiting the places they had imaged in their minds.
the second key curiosity it was curiosity that caused Columbus to sail the seas in search of new lands if he had been satisfied with popular belief that the earth was flat he never would have embarked on his voyages of discovery it was curiosity that caused the scientist Fleming to wonder why green mold on bread in a test tube killed germs his curiosity led him to discovery of the life-saving penicillin which is called a miracle drug and which has saved the lives of millions of people it was a curiosity that led Galvani to experiment with his galvanic battery from which so many inventions have come curiosity has been implanted in the consciousness of man for a specific purpose this divine emotion makes him discontented with the world as it is and causes him to search for new ways to change things to improve them and to give man greater comfort and luxury how to develop curiosity one Look about you in your work and see how you might improve conditions. Many an invention has been born because man's natural curiosity caused him to wonder if he couldn't improve on the methods being used in his business. A man sitting at a lecture was disturbed by a woman's big hat. He became curious as to how to convert the obstruction to something positive. And before he left the auditorium, he had an idea for a new hat pin, which made him a fortune. Two, look at some invention, such as radio or television, and try to figure out the principle involved in its mechanism. Three, look around you in your garden and see the fruit, vegetables, and flowers, and try to reason out the method by which they draw the nourishment from the soil to create their products it was the type of curiosity that led Burbank to develop so many new types of fruits vegetables and flowers it was curiosity that led George Washington Carver to convert the lowly peanut into plastics insulating materials fodder for cattle varnishes oils paints and many other products which helped revolutionize the industry of the south four when it thunders or lightnings try to understand the reason why look up the facts in an encyclopedia or the internet <laughs> five stimulate the curiosity response centers of your brain by wondering how other people live in other parts of the world study books in your library showing the customs and habitats of people in Asia Africa South America and Australia six when you listen to beautiful music or read interesting stories try to analyze the emotions that prompted the composers and authors to create their works The third key, knowledge. It is through the intellect that man rules the universe. The pen is mightier than the sword. Your miracle super forces of the mind are more easily motivated and released when you fortify yourself with knowledge. This does not mean that you must be a college graduate to succeed in life. Many great men have risen to high positions who did not have a formal education wisdom is very often an innate trait and some of the great philosophers like Socrates and Plato founded their own schools Henry Ford was not a college graduate but he had innate wisdom he absorbed knowledge sufficient for his purposes and succeeded in his chosen field Bacon said for knowledge 2. 
is itself power. All knowledge begins with this precept by Socrates, know thyself, the regime for building knowledge. 1. Observe the universe about you and stimulate all five senses by absorbing the sights, sounds, and experiences that surround you every day. 2. Reason out why things happen in the physical and material universe under the law of cause and effect. 3. Study specialized knowledge that fits your business or profession and keep up to date on latest developments in your field by subscribing to magazines dealing in such matters. 4. Expand the horizons of your mind by absorbing as much knowledge as you can about as many things as possible. Take an interest in civic events in your community. Join clubs and organizations that have a wide diversity of interests. 5. Learn by example through emulating the lives and thoughts of great men of history. Read their biographies and autobiographies. Find out what they thought, how they worked, what books they read. Learn everything you can about their lives and then use them as models by which you shape your own life. 6. Study books on psychology and find out how the human mind works. You will not only be better able to cope with your own life problems by knowing psychology, but such a study will help you understand other people better and improve your relationship with them in your social life and business world. 7. Every day, learn some new word or fact that will add to the sum total of your knowledge as you grow older. Most people make the mistake of closing their minds to new ideas when they close their high school or college books. The human brain is illimitable in its ability to absorb more and more knowledge as we grow older. Scientists now find that an older person who has kept his brain agile and active can learn and retain new facts as readily as a young person. 8. Keep your brain agile and exercised by studying a foreign language course or working out mathematical problems or studying public speaking, singing, dancing, music, writing, any activity that is new to you and which will keep your brain and body cells active and youthful will not only add to your sum total of knowledge, but will actually give you better health and more vitality. Scientists now find that the brain centers are tied in some mysterious fashion to various organs and centers of the body. When any of these brain centers are left undeveloped, they atrophy and the parts of the body which are tied in with these brain centers begin to deteriorate and weaken. This is why scientists now urge old people to take an active interest in all kinds of hobbies and avocations when they retire. A young man once asked J.P. Morgan why he didn't retire. He said to the great financier, you're worth over a hundred million dollars. You surely don't need more money. Why don't you retire? Morgan asked the man, when did your father retire? The man answered, in 1908. Why? When did your father die? Morgan asked. In 1911, the man answered. That's the reason I don't retire, Morgan replied. Nine. Have a planned reading regime for your future. Try to read a book a week, not just fiction, but books that will help you improve your mind and add to the sum total of your knowledge like the reality revolution. 
it is good to vary the subject of those books so that you expand your horizons of thinking to encompass many fields. You might get a simple book or on astronomy and discover the fascinating cosmic world of outer space. You might study a book on science and invention to learn of the miracles being produced by men's minds in our atomic age. Biology is another fascinating subject which will teach you secrets about the vibrant and expanding world in which you live. You might also study the various philosophies of the ages, beginning with the Greek philosophers and then going into the teachings of the Far East and the comparative religions of the world. History is another all-engrossing subject for you to study, for through learning about the past, you can know what mistakes to avoid in the future. The fourth key, affirmative will. The miracle super forces of your mind are unlocked by this fourth key, affirmative will. Most people are buffeted by the forces of life. They vacillate back and forth between two possible courses of action, not knowing which to do until it is too late. They are very much like the mule which hesitated between two piles of hay, not knowing which to go to, and starved as a consequence of his vacillation. Affirmative will summons all the super forces of your conscious and subconscious minds into a positive, dynamic, focal point which drives you towards your objective without hesitation or hindrance. There are two opposing forces in life, and man is constantly forced to make a choice between these two. There is the will to succeed and the will to fail, the will to be healthy and the will to be sick, the will to live and the will to die, the will to be rich and the will to remain poor, the will to happiness and the will to misery the will to love and the will to hate, the will to good and the will to evil, the will to peace and the will to war. Man must choose his destiny. Man can choose his destiny. He is different from all other living creatures in that he has the power of choice. By exercising your affirmative will, you can select the events that make up your destiny. Just as the artist chooses the scenes he will paint and the colors with which to paint those scenes, if he does not like what he painted, he cannot blame it on the scene he is copying, but on himself for his own inability to accurately reproduce the scene from nature. There are two types of will in life also. They are one, passive will, and two, affirmative will. The passive will can create mental images of success and riches that lacks the capacity to execute these images into reality. Many would-be millionaires daydream about having a million dollars, but they lack the affirmative will to put their daydreams into motion. How to use affirmative will. 1. The will is fashioned from the mental habit patterns that you build. From the time you were born, you began to build habit patterns for almost every act of your life. You rise in the morning and bathe, brush your teeth, shave, or make up. Put on your clothes, lace your shoes, and prepare to go to your day's work. You do not give much conscious attention to these daily actions, for you have built habit patterns that take care of most of them. If your daily habit patterns have been negative ones 
and your mind is filled with thoughts of fear, failure, and disaster, then your auto conditioning will all be in favor of these negative emotions and your actions will be correspondingly negative. Change the habit patterns of your mind from negative ones to positive ones. This is easier said than done, but it can be accomplished if you use the power of your affirmative will. Smokers who wish to stop know how difficult it is to change their habit patterns. They must make a superhuman effort to give up the habit of smoking. How do you change your habit patterns in the same way they are created? By performing the mental or physical act over and over again until it is deeply ingrained in your consciousness that it becomes automatic. Then we call the action a habit. 2. Use creative commands to your higher consciousness. The higher centers of your brain are stirred into action by creative commands. Let these be given each morning as you start your day's activity. Then all during the day use little energy boosters to keep your spirits high and your energies at their maximum peak. You can say a dozen times a day, I feel wonderful. I am able to overcome this problem. I am now dissolving these obstacles through the power of my will. I like people and they like me. 3. Try not to let negative experiences in life prove too discouraging. Everyone has these negative conditions to cope with. Even the millionaire has his problems. When some condition arises that tends to get you down, say to yourself, this too shall pass away. Another good statement to dissolve these unwanted negative experiences is this. The solution to the problem is already on the way. 4. The affirmative will must be exercised every day of your life. Otherwise, you are apt to slip into negative and passive habit patterns that affect your entire future destiny. Every day, exercise the will to live. How? Have an intense desire to live for some specific cause or person. You may want to educate your children you may want to own your home. You may desire a fortune to help other people. The more altruistic and unselfish your purpose for living, the greater will be the life energy that flows from your higher mind. Many people who have lost the will to live die early in life because they have no one to live for and nothing they want to accomplish. When people are motivated by a desire to live for some purpose, they often have a release of the life force that keeps them going until they are a hundred or more. Grandma Moses was an example of how this super force of the mind can enormously extend the normal lifespan and give one many years of creative, useful activity. At 76 years of age, she began to paint and soon was selling her paintings at enormous sums. She lived to be over a hundred and there is no doubt that her renewed interest in creating helped stimulate the miracle super forces of her brain, infusing her body cells with life-giving energy and purposefulness. 5. Every day, exercise the affirmative will to succeed. Do this by planning each day's activity with one thought in mind to make it as successful as possible. It is good to write down a day-by-day -day plan 
so as to focalize your mind's energies on things you want to accomplish. Just as a housewife makes out a shopping list for the market, so you should make out a list each day of what you wish to accomplish on that day. Or maybe it was a house husband. I don't know. <laughs> list your appointments, your day's work, the sales you wish to make, the money you are going to spend, the purchases you plan, the social engagements you will have, a neat an orderly mind ensures a neat and orderly life and destiny. 6. Exercise daily the affirmative will to attract more money. Money is an idea more than it is an actual material thing. In ancient times, such strange things as tea, fur, stones, pieces of iron, tobacco and other objects served as money. You can only attract more money when it becomes a habit pattern in your thinking every day. The reason 60% of all college graduates achieve their goal in life is because they were trained in college to think in terms of being successful in their chosen professions. They formed the mental habit patterns of success. Every time you spend a dollar, think of its value. It is said that John D. Rockefeller Sr. never tipped more than a dime. One day someone asked him why a man as rich as he didn't tip more. Rockefeller replied, why? A dime is 10% interest on one dollar for a full year. Money works under the law of the harvest. When you plant a seed in the ground, it usually produces 10 to 20 times the yield of the original seed. When you give money out, make it a point to bless it and know that it will yield you abundance. The fifth key, divine ego. Most people who fail in life do so because they are using the wrong type of ego power. They are so obsessed with excessive self-interest that they lose their perspective and ignore the rights and interests of others. Such people are called egotists. This type of egotism is destructive and causes people to dislike one. Do not misunderstand me. We need some ego a great deal of self-interest for purposes of self-preservation. But in our metaphysical studies, we convert this power of the psyche, which consciously controls the impulses of the id, as it is called in psychology, into the divine ego. The changes in your personality and ego drive will be miraculous when you once institute this method of unlocking the miracle super forces of your mind. How to build the divine ego. 1. Realize that you were created in the image and likeness of God, as the Bible tells us. This is a spiritual idea, not a physical one. When you once accept the premise that you are divine and immortal, then you will begin to be godlike in your thoughts and actions. Voltaire said, to be a hero, think heroic thoughts. To be divine, you should pattern your thoughts and actions after the divine image. What are the godlike thoughts and actions which you should emulate? God is described in the Bible in two ways. God is good and God is love. If you pattern your thinking after goodness and love, with all their ramifications, you cannot help but reflect goodness and love in all your relationships with others. 2. Cultivate the habit of unselfish actions in relation to others. Share your good with other people. Share your happiness. Instead of talking about yourself and your problems when you meet other people, Make it a point to show interest in them and their activities. 3. 
Work in community projects such as the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Enter into charity drives for such worthwhile organizations as the Heart Fund, the Polio Fund, the Lighthouse for the Blind, American Legion, and veteran organizations. Volunteer to work a few hours a week in foundling homes for orphans, in veteran hospitals for soldiers, in prisons, and other public welfare groups. Such expanded interests do more than merely help the unfortunate. They help you in building the divine ego which can enrich your life and give you blessings of health, happiness, and prosperity by releasing the miracle super forces of your higher mind. 4. Have a higher master motive in your life. Desire success and money not only for yourself and your family, but also so you can help better the world through your creative efforts. There are many master motives which propel man towards his destiny. Desire for power, desire for money, fame, glory, a desire for wisdom, a desire for material things, a desire to bring peace to the world, to work for brotherhood and tolerance, a desire to spiritualize your mind and find new dimensions of the soul. The higher your master motive, the greater the drive for success and fulfillment. 5. Overcome the animalistic emotions of greed, hatred, selfishness, and envy. The divine image within your consciousness cannot flourish in such an atmosphere of negativity. 6. Implant in your consciousness the positive forces of charity, beauty, truth, justice, faith, and love. And soon you will see the divine inspiration that flows through your consciousness from the divine mind within you. 7. Spend a few moments each day in spiritual contemplation and meditation. In such mystical periods, search within for life's true meaning. Try to find the divine prototype within your own immortal soul. Pray to God for guidance and inspiration every morning when you arise and every night when you go to bed. When you feel the gravity pull of Earth's problems, fears and worries, stop so whatever you are doing and retire for a few moments into the stillness of the cathedral of the soul and say to yourself, peace, be still and know that I am God. This powerful, affirmative spiritual statement from the Bible reaffirms your sense of divinity and will help you once more restore peace and tranquility within your consciousness. Write down on a small card these words. Carry them with you in your pocket or purse and look at them several times a day. Let each man think himself an act of God, his mind a thought, his life a breath of God. The sixth key, perseverance. Perseverance means the ability to continue doing something in spite of difficulties or opposition. Many times, a person who wishes to succeed will stop making the effort because of the many obstacles that he has to face. If he persisted just a short time longer, in many cases, he would undoubtedly have won his goal. A miner in the Nevada desert had struck a vein of gold in his claim which brought him a few thousand dollars and then petered out. The miner became discouraged and sold his equipment to a junk man for a few hundred dollars. The new owner kept digging, and after a few hours, he broke through a wall of stone where he hid a vein of gold that produced $40,000 worth of pure ore. That gold mine brought the new owner $5 million in the next few years. You 
may be on the verge of achieving your greatest success if you but persevere a little longer and do not give up. About 20 years ago, I visited Lucille Ball on a set at RKO Studios in Hollywood. After lunch, we had a photograph taken together and the young and radiantly beautiful star told me rather sadly, this is my last day at RKO. My contract ends today and they are not renewing it. I expressed my surprise and regrets. But the irrepressible Lucille said, Oh, don't worry about me. Someday I'll come back and buy the joint. A few years ago, Lucille Ball returned to the studio that had fired her and paid about $15 million for the entire studio. Talk about miracles. This red-haired, talented young lady who went on to fame and fortune on television was able to stir the miracle super forces of her mind by her amazing perseverance in never giving up and by fulfilling the promise she made to herself in jest to eventually buy the studio that had fired her. There is a powerful and stimulating force within your psyche which works miracles when you respond to the challenges of life with perseverance and courage how to utilize perseverance one work with the law of cycles in nature there is a time in every life when fate presents a set of circumstances which can bring one success and fortune learn how to study and be aware of these cycles and then take advantage of the opportunities that arise with confidence Shakespeare spoke of these cycles in men's lives in these words there is a tide in the affairs of men which taken at the flood leads on to fortune omitted all the voyages of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries two when you come to those periods of stagnation in your life when nothing seems to happen learn how to utilize that time study and prepare your mind for the time when your good fortune will come persevere in what you are doing and do not give up for like the miner in the desert your greatest good fortune may lie just within your grasp three in nature all things mature slowly and in their right season spring is for planting the seed summer is for growth and evolvement fall is for harvest and winter is for rest and relaxation this same cycle exists in human destiny if your fortune does not come in your youth the springtime of life remember this is not always the time of the harvest it is the time of planting evolve develop your mind prepare for the future when you are young but do not always expect the fortune of which you dream for it must also follow the law of nature if you are in the summertime of your life that is your mature years and you still have not achieved your success then you must re-examine your life and see what you have done that is wrong and after correcting your mistake persevere and wait for your success for no matter how discouraged you may become try not to give up remember that throughout history more great men and women who ever achieved anything worthwhile were told by others that they would fail the mob consciousness is always one of discouragement defeat and disaster when fulton invented his steamboat thousands of people gathered along the hudson to watch its attempt to go upstream against the current as the steam began to rise from its funnel the mob shouted as with one voice it won't start it won't start then as the boat began to move against the current 
The mob continued their chanting, only this time they changed it to, It won't stop, it won't stop. 5. When you persevere in your efforts, you build electrical and magnetic current in your brain and body cells, which charges your muscles and nerves with a superabundance of dynamic energy. It is much easier to succeed when you have conditioned the miracle super forces of your mind with the idea that failure is impossible. Your continued efforts to achieve your goals is also proof to the indwelling miracle worker that you have faith in your ability to achieve your objective. The seventh key, magnetic attraction. Magnetic attraction exists between all of the particles that make up the visible and invisible universe. It is the etheric flow of invisible substance which keeps our planets rotating in their orbits, the earth and the moon around the sun, and all the billions of other planets in outer space rotating around each other without ever colliding or deviating from their orbital paths. In fact, this law of magnetic attraction which Newton named gravity is so accurate in its workings that we set our earth clocks by the stars. We can predict to the minute when any given star in our solar system will be even 10 centuries from now. It was this tremendous power of magnetism which Jesus used to perform most of his miracles by summoning up the reserves of life magnetism within the person's body and brain. The master metaphysician could heal the sick and even infuse new life into the dead. How to release magnetism. One, magnetism is in every cell of your brain and body. but it is scattered throughout the body. When you wish to summon it for a very specific purpose, you must concentrate your mind on the act which you wish to perform. If you are trying to magnetize another person, you should concentrate on that person. Project your thoughts to him. Say his name over and over and direct your thoughts to him just as if you were talking to him in person. The person need not be near you but can be at a great distance. It has been proved that when people are apart, even as far as 3,000 miles, they can transmit their thoughts to each other. An instance of how the ether waves act as magnetic currents, which the human brain may tap, is that of a young lady who went to visit relatives in San Francisco in the days before planes were making the transcontinental trip. While she was on the lengthy train trip, her father had been taken seriously ill and was near death. The girl's mother frantically concentrated her thoughts on her daughter, sending her this message. When you get off the train, call home. It is urgent. As the train approached San Francisco, the girl became more and more restless with a vague sense of unrest and worry. As soon as she got off the train, she telephoned her home and learned of her father's serious illness. She boarded the next train for home. 2. You can use magnetism for many different purposes to magnetize others, as we have learned above, to attract people to yourself that you like or to attract money and material things to show how this magnetic attraction works in one's life let me tell you of an instance where magnetism attracted a famous movie star to me when I was unknown struggling for recognition in Hollywood it was the year of the Great Depression and I had gone to Hollywood but could not find work finally I took a job in a photographic studio with Edwin Bauer Hesser, a famous photographer of movie stars. 
I concentrated my mind on meeting Mary Pickford for at least a year before going to Hollywood. At that time, Mary Pickford was known as America's sweetheart and every boy and man in the country considered her the ideal woman. Before going to Hollywood, I studied palmistry, astrology, and other mystical arts to better understand myself and other people. One day, Miss Pickford came into the studio to have some photos taken to publicize her new picture, Coquette, which she was making with Buddy Rogers. While the photographer was preparing his equipment, I helped her pass the time by reading her palm and telling her about herself with astrology. The amazing thing which I did not know at the time was that I had psychically tuned in on her marital split up with Douglas Fairbanks Sr which was being kept a secret from the world. I told her details about the life which astounded her and she invited me to a big party she was giving for Lord and Lady Mountbatten of England the following week. At that party I met William Randolph Hearst who was to change the entire course of my life through worldwide publicity he gave my work in the mystical sciences. The magnetic attraction which I had created by concentrating on Mary Pickford undoubtedly brought about the series of accidents which led to our meeting and eventually helped fashion my entire future career. 3. Magnetize your mind by daily passing a series of pictures and thoughts through it of the people you want to meet the things you want to do, the trips you wish to take, the money you want to attract, the new job you wish to have, the home you want to live in, the gifts and talents you would like to develop. Of course, there is more to this miracle power than merely passing the pictures and thoughts of your goal objectives through your mind. But the process of magnetic attraction must begin by having these image concepts firmly in your mind. Later, in our deeper study of magnetism on the cosmic and spiritual planes of consciousness, we shall explore this subject further. The best way to fix these magnetic thought images in your mind is to write them down where you can see them and read them over every day. This helps in the process of magnetizing them. 4. The magnetism of your brain and body can be built through a conscious regime. As magnetism is in the air all about you, it is vitally important that you breathe deeply and consciously when you wish to increase the fund of magnetism within your body. I was able to overcome headaches and other minor physical discomforts by taking 10 or 15 deep breaths, holding them to the count of four and then in exhaling. One can also go to sleep more easily by doing this, for it helps the body's magnetism and relaxes the tense nerves and muscles. The first time I stepped out onto the vast stage of Carnegie Hall, to deliver my first lecture in New York City. I would normally have been a little uneasy. However, having studied yoga breathing and occult sciences for some years, I quickly inhaled 10 or 15 times, charging my brain and body with vast funds of magnetism. And I stepped out onto that stage with a feeling of calmness and tranquility. Always before a lecture, I use this method for quickly recharging the batteries of my brain and body with new electrical and magnetic power. The miracle super forces of your brain are stirred into magnetic action by deep breathing. So do not neglect this vital function. Most people only breathe with the upper parts of their lungs and the lower parts atrophy from disuse. Breathe deeply and hold the breath four 
for five counts and then exhale. Do this at least four or five times a day. When you are fatigued from work, instead of taking another cigarette or glass of alcoholic stimulant, try the magnetic act of deep breathing. It will give you instant energy and lengthen your life by many years. The eighth key, divine inspiration. Someone has said, inspiration helps man grow wings of soul and rise above earth's prison house. Divine inspiration raises man even higher into the realms of transcendental peace, beauty, and joy. Anything that stimulates your mind emotionally to creative thoughts and actions can be said to be inspiring. Divine inspiration releases the miracle super forces of your higher mind to such an extent that you are given super normal powers and energies that are unknown to the average person. All geniuses had this ability of charging their higher minds with divine inspiration and releasing a veritable flood of creative and inspiring ideas. In music, those great composers had this divine inspiration. Beethoven, Mozart, Handel, and Bach. In art, divine inspiration motivated such geniuses as Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Rembrandt, and Raphael. In literature, and poetry, divine inspiration was shown to Shakespeare, Dante, Milton, Homer, Byron, Keats, Wordsworth. In exploration and discovery, men like Marco Polo, Columbus, De Soto, and Ponce de Leon undoubtedly had divine inspiration. In science, Newton, Pasteur, Galileo, Edison, Einstein, Fleming, and Salk had divine inspiration. There's only a small list of the great ones of history who went motivated by divine inspiration. In every field of human endeavor, there have been literally hundreds of thousands of men and women who possess this form of inspiration in their creative work. The Regime for Releasing Divine Inspiration 1. When you want to stimulate the miracle response centers of your higher mind, use the transcendental power of beautiful and inspiring music to aid you. This means classical and semi-classical music, not the discordant forms of new and modern jazz, which tend to overexcite the brain centers. Waltzes, Hawaiian music, and even modern ballads may be used to relax the mind and body. But for high inspiration, it has been found that the great enduring classical compositions are best for inducing higher forms of inspiration. It has been found that in industry where people work with music playing in the background, their output increases, their energy level is higher, and there is a decrease in fatigue and accidents. This proves the efficacy of music as an inspirational force to stimulate the higher response centers of the human psyche. 2. When you wish divine inspiration, align yourself with the natural grandeur and beauty of the universe. Stand at the ocean's edge and observe a sunrise or sunset. Look up at the lofty mountaintops and visualize the peace and serenity to be found there. Observe the sun, the moon, and stars, and project your mind to lofty pinnacles of achievement. Using these natural wonders as ideals and inspiration. Be aware of spring with its rich verdure and multicolored blooms. See the power and majesty of flowing rivers and placid lakes reflecting the blue, the heavens and fluffy white clouds. 
stop your work occasionally and walk in a park. If you live in the city, go to the botanical garden, a zoo, or some nearby field, and let your mind be inspired by the richness and variety to be found in nature. This will help recharge your mind and body with the energy and bring you a sense of serenity and peace. 3. Divine inspiration can be released within your mind by a study of the great religious books of the world. You should make it a point to learn what all the great teachers and prophets have taught. Study the Christian Bible, the Talmud, the Koran, the Buddhist Bible, and any other spiritual revelations that interest you. 4. Memorize quotations from the Bible, which you can repeat daily when you feel the need of divine inspiration. I have found the 23rd Psalm and the 91st Psalm helpful. You may also use the Lord's Prayer as given in the Bible. 5. Study the transcendental philosophies of some of our great minds. The Golden Age of Greece was shaped by such men as Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Let their inspired thinking help elevate your consciousness to new and lofty pinnacles of nobility and grandeur. Our own American philosophers, Emerson and Thoreau, are also worthy of study and emulation. 6. You can receive divine inspiration through doing charitable acts for others, helping to inspire those who are less fortunate than yourself is a wonderful way to recharge your brain and body with new inspiration. You can also help inspire others with your smiles, words of encouragement and kindness. 7. Prayer lifts man's soul into lofty dimensions of spirit that transcend Earth's gravity pull. Pray often during the day. Little short prayers help inspire you and energize your mind and body. A hundred times a day, I say little prayers like this. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day. I am grateful to you, God, for sending me such good friends. Thank you, God, for this lovely sunshine. Help me, God, to overcome this problem. God, give me guidance and inspiration to carry out this task. These are little soul boosters which keep one in constant attunement with the divine source of all life and all good. The ninth key, dynamic action. The first law of the universe is the law of action. To stir the miracle response centers of your mind into creative patterns of thought, there must be dynamic action in your thinking first. Everyone has some form of action in his life, but the miracle working kind of action is known as dynamic actions. Synonyms for dynamic are energetic, vigorous, and forceful. The type of thought that reaches out into time and space and stirs creative forces into motion is dynamic thought. A dynamic thought is one that you hold persistently and that infuses your brain and body with the necessity for dynamic action. When Edison tried 10,000 times to find a substance for his electric light filament, an assistant said, it's no use, Mr. Edison. You've tried 10,000 times and failed. You might as well give up. The great inventor driven by some inner compulsion into a vortex of dynamic mental and physical action replied, give up never. Now we know 10,000 things that don't work. His next experiment the following day proved successful. Regime for releasing dynamic action. 1. Emotionalize your thoughts for greater dynamic action. The nerves and muscles of your body respond to emotions 
that are fervent and dynamic. The lukewarm mind that is without enthusiasm or emotion seldom has the drive to get things done. Toynbee, the noted historian, says that the southern peoples who lived in an atmosphere of indolence and inactivity where the weather was extremely hot and the people became lazy have always been conquered by northern races who lived in a stimulating climate that engendered dynamic action. No matter where you live, north or south, you can achieve more dynamic action by emotionalizing your thoughts. When you want something, want it urgently. When you love someone, do so with emotion. When you face a new job, show enthusiasm and happiness. When you want more money for some specific thing, flood your mind with thoughts of the things you will buy, how much you will enjoy them. In this way, you will stir your brain and body into dynamic action patterns with your emotions and make it much easier for you to achieve the things you desire. 2. Overcome the tendency to procrastinate and put things off until tomorrow. This tendency kills dynamic action, and many wonderful ideas you have will never be carried out into forms of creative action. Adopt a do-it-now attitude, and even put a sign over your desk or work table with the words, do it now, written on it. I did this for years until I acquired the habit of doing things that I wanted to put off. One of the most important letters I ever wrote, which brought me good business results, came as a result of this habit to do it now. If I had waited a week longer, I would have been too late. 3. Work with the laws of nature, not against them. You cannot burn the candle at both ends and have light very long. If you dissipate your energies, stay up late at night, gamble, drink excessively or smoke too much or overwork or overplay, you are upsetting the law of balance in nature and you cannot have dynamic action. Your mind and body must be kept at a peak of perfection and high energy at all times. Otherwise, you will become inefficient and ineffective in everything you do. The law of balance in nature decrees that there must be balance in everything we do, mentally or physically. Balance your work by having some fun and relaxing as often as possible. Balance physical love with spiritual needs of man's soul. The need to worship and the love of God this cross of balance will tend to give you more dynamic action in everything you do. 4. Use the law of adaptation in your life so that you are not constantly bucking the tide. Some people spend all their time and energy opposing other people that carry a chip on their shoulder and make enemies of friends. Others fight the elements or society's taboos and restrictions. These are rugged individuals who want unlicensed freedom to act in any way they wish in a society that is rigidly regulated by codes of morals and behavior. This includes the beatnik generation who wish to wear long hair and beards and appear in public in dirty and shabby clothing. There is nothing wrong with this conduct if it does not infringe on the rights of others, but the individual who casts off all restraints and does exactly as he wishes must pay the price in being ostracized by society and losing many opportunities for improving his lot in life. Dynamic action does not mean throwing off all restraints, but adapting to the mores of society and adjusting to the existing situation as gracefully as possible. 
5. Dynamic action mentally and physically can be implemented by applying the law of evolution to your life. You must continue to evolve, and when you stop evolving and growing, you begin to stagnate. Nature has this law in action throughout all creation. When something ceases to be useful, it is destroyed. Make it a point to keep evolving your mind and body, to maintain them in useful forms of action as long as there is life within you. Have some mental exercise each day. Also have some form of physical exercise which will help maintain you in dynamic and useful condition until advanced old age. 6. Love of humanity has been one of the great master motives which has stirred countless thousands of men and women in many forms of dynamic and successful action. Father Damien worked with the lepers of Molokai for years, bringing new methods of treatments to that dread disease, and finally gave his life in that work. He was stirred to such dynamic action by his love of humanity. Mercurie and her husband worked for 20 years in a miserable lean-to where snow drifted through the cracks in winter, extracting minute particles from hundreds of tons of pitch blends to isolate a gram of radium. Their work was for the good of humanity, and now many people are saved because of this loving sacrifice. Dr. Albert Schweitzer dedicated his life to serving the Africans in the jungles where he brought the healing to thousands. This dedicated man was inspired to dynamic action by his love of people. 7. To increase your flow of dynamic energy for all purposes in your life. Have some definite goal which you are trying to achieve. This goal should be readjusted every five years or so, for our needs change as we grow older. With this fixed goal in mind, focalize all your thoughts and emotions on its achievements, and soon your brain and body will be flooded with dynamic energy that will inspire you to dynamic action. Elsewhere in our study, we have given some worthwhile goals which everyone is trying to achieve. The Tenth Key Metaphysical Divine Love A tremendous new power was released to the world when the master metaphysician Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, love ye one another. The old law had been an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, a law of revenge and hatred. Undoubtedly, the profound changes of civilization experienced after this law was released could be traced to this new philosophical concept of divine love. There are many different types of love. Elsewhere in our study, we learn of the healing power of love and also the need for physical and emotional love in our lives. The most potent type of love for stirring the miracle super forces of your mind is divine love. The human soul searches throughout eternity for its divine counterpart, God. Our earthly experience is a constant quest for our physical mate, for purposes of procreation and carrying on the race. However, the soul has its hunger and its need also. It is for divine love, the divine romance in which man in the generic sense, searches for his lost half, the God consciousness, in a cosmic love that extends throughout eternity. When man once discovers this divine love, he becomes complete and fulfilled. The love of God transforms and transfigures 
all humanity into the radiant divine image of God himself. How to realize divine love. 1. Do little loving things every day of your life for your friends, relatives and neighbors. These little kindnesses gradually build the habit pattern of divine love within your consciousness and in turn attract loving actions from others. 2. To build the divine love concept, you must first rid your mind of the consciousness of hate, envy, resentment, jealousy and malice. Whenever such a negative thought enters your mind, say to yourself, I now supplant this negative thought with the thought of divine love. Soon you will have rid your mind of these deadly negative thoughts which counteract divine love. 3. It is not enough to love only our friends and relatives. We should extend divine love to everyone in the entire world. I know it's difficult to hold this cosmic concept of love for there have been so many enmities throughout the centuries in countries that have long been oppressed by their enemies. Many people hate the Germans, the Japanese, the Russians. The Greeks hate the Turks because they occupied their country for 400 years. Rationally, we can understand such reactions, but spiritually, we cannot condone hate of any kind. We must try to rationalize our reasons for hating and then work out a pattern of forgiveness and divine love so we do not come under the negative emotional effects which hatred engenders. A girl who came to my lectures in Carnegie Hall for some time had the most radiant and beautiful expressions on her face. I became curious as to why she was so magnetic and attractive. Her features were not too beautiful, but there was a spiritual quality within her that transcended the physical. One day I asked her for her secret of loveliness. She smiled brightly, opened a gold locket hanging on a chain about her neck and showed me the inscription inside, whom, not having seen, I love. Then I understood the reason for her spiritual beauty and serenity. She loved the entire world and its inhabitants with divine love. 4. Every time you meet someone that you want to hold an interest, Practice projecting an invisible golden line between your mind and theirs. Send out the thoughts on this golden cord. I love the divine in you, and you will love the divine in me. People sense our thoughts, and they will instantly respond to thoughts of love and kindness. Another young lady who came to my lectures told me in an interview with her that she could not attract the right type of boyfriend. She wanted to marry and have children desperately. But all the men she attracted seemed so physical and animalistic that she had withdrawn into a shell of solitude and no longer went out on dates with boys. I gave her this golden cord concept and told her to radiate divine love rather than physical or emotional love. She left my office a changed person. Within one month, she had three propositions of marriage from fine men. Later, she made her choice and married. She now has three beautiful children and her entire life has changed. Five, your mental states show on your face and in the contours of your body in order to show the world the image of divine love. Begin at once to change your facial expressions from anxiety, fear, worry, and hate to expressions of love 
confidence, peace, and poise. To do this, stand before your mirror and study the various expressions that come onto your face with various emotions. Think of something you hate. Notice how the face becomes an ugly mask. Fear and worry do the same thing. Now change your thought. Think of someone or something that you love. See the uplifted expression of the cheeks and mouth. When you meet people you want to attract or impress, carry the expression on your face that you have when you say, I love you. 6. Another important way for stirring the consciousness of divine love from within is to memorize beautiful and romantic poetry. The electrical pulsations from your mind to your face tend to set the mold of your expression in the form of thoughts you habitually think. Emerson said, What you are speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. To shape the inner consciousness so it radiations are romantic and beautiful in your face and form absorb the beauty and meaning of romantic poetry learn elizabeth barrett browning's beautiful poem how do i love thee in its entirety and say it often when you wish to become inspired with divine love study the poems of keats shelley and byron also the love sonnets of shakespeare 7. Learn to be a lover of beauty in life, and soon you will reflect beauty in your soul. This soul beauty transcends physical beauty and will make you radiant and beautiful. And so that is our first deep dive excursion with a chapter by Anthony Norvell in his wonderful book, Metaphysics, The Dimensions of the New Mind. So to summarize, the miracle metaphysical forces that he's talking about, that geniuses possess, and he mentions experiments with thought projections, and then goes into the 10 keys to develop and bring about these powers. Keys of imagination for releasing miracle power, and how to stimulate the imagination. He talked about curiosity and how it opens doors. Are you curious? Do you care anymore? Awaken your curiosity. The knowledge and how it rules the universe. The fourth density is the density of love and understanding. And so this understanding is this process of learning and this knowledge gives us power. Even this chapter is knowledge that gives me power. Every single thing I read is expanding my own knowledge. He mentions affirmative will, which is very similar to my discussion in my episode on how to make a decision and how important the will is. There is this affirmative will and his discussion of it was fantastic. Then the divine ego for building your life. The great reminder of the key of perseverance for releasing these forces. You don't just simply visualize something once. You stick to it. You show the universe that it is what you truly desire. He mentions magnetic attraction and how to use it for great success. Magnetizing your cells and your body. He has a wonderful description of divine inspiration and divine and dynamic action. The idea of action and the way he describes it was fantastic. And it was great that he ended this with love and divine love. So I thought these 10 principles were very powerful and very helpful. If you believe that you have not seen your power in the world, try to use these 10 keys to unlock your spiritual and metaphysical power. Because you are powerful. Awaken that God self within you by unlocking and opening your imagination and curiosity. Find 
inspiration. All of these things are powerful. We will definitely return to Anthony Norvell, and I hope that this helped to expand your power. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution. <laughs>